always that one person at work who got the same title as you or even lower that thinks they're the manager or want to be the manager so bad that they will do anything like girl go on, go on out of my face before I cuss you out and get fired hey everybody it's your girl simply Niara welcome back to my channel thank you for coming so today we are gonna get into selling Tampa. I'm really excited to talk about this because when I watched this show, I was like, I could not stop. So this show is definitely binge-worthy. Seeing all these black women selling homes, like, girl, I had me trying to, I was like finna call the California State Board and be like, um, so what do I got to do to get my little real estate license? Like, what's up? I'm trying to be a realtor. So a little bit of info on Selling Tampa, if you haven't already watched it, and if you haven't watched it, I recommend you watch it because I'm gonna give you some spoilers, so. So it's it's supposed to be like a spinoff of Selling Sunset. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I watched a little bit of Selling Sunset. It was not giving for me. Like, I was, it was not really relatable to me, so. You know, I didn't I didn't love it. I really like selling Tampa more. Maybe, I don't know. Don't fight me, y'all. Don't fight me. But I just feel like it was a little bit more interesting to me. So I'm just going to do like a character by character analysis. So first, I'm going to get into my girl, Tennille. Tennille was a kiki. She was hella funny. I really like Tennille. I thought Tennille deserved way more screen time. She was so funny. She was so funny. Like she gave kind of like Nene Leakes, um, like Real Housewives of Atlanta vibes. Like she's perfect for a reality show. I think she was super funny. Um, she was witty, but she was a boss though. Like she she seemed really smart and like really on her stuff. And um, one fun fact that I found out about her when I was like doing research for this video was that she was like a former legislative secretary for the Florida State Senate. And I was like, oh, okay, that's where it comes from. Because she definitely got like a boss kind of like mi like military almost vibe to her. Because she is just super about her money, follows the rules, and she's just trying to get her money in. So Tennille was a little bit of a mean girl. Like the way she put Colony out there, like ac accused her of selling coochie. <laughs> that was so funny. I was like, girl, you know you're wrong. You didn't have to do Colony like that. But overall, I really liked her. She she definitely I feel like some of the girls were scared of her a little bit because she she seems like like if you buck she will nut. Wait, if you buck, if you nut, she'll buck. She'll buck, she'll nut if you buck. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. She seems like that that mean girl that nobody's going to step to because she could fight. So, I liked her. I think she needs more screen time. If they do a season 2, she definitely deserves to be on the screen more. And then what what really is so funny is that she coined she coined the name HR for um Joanna, which is very shady but very funny because Joanna is not HR, but we'll get into her a little bit later. All right, so next is Alexis. <sighs> now I don't like to call people dumb, but sis was a dingbat. Like, girl, what is wrong with you? How'd you even get your real estate license? Like, what is you doing here? She was not selling a damn thing. Well, really, I feel like nobody in the show sold a house. I'm not sure. If I, I feel like I saw that. I'm not sure if y'all feel that. But I'm like, I don't see nobody like signing no papers, like closing deals. You feel me? But nevertheless, girl, Alexis, like, are you on drugs? What made you think that the property taxes for a multi-million dollar house was going to be $6,000? Like... If you ever worked in customer service or anything like that, you know not to quote anybody a price that you're not sure of. So if if somebody in like fast food and retail can get that, you're like a realtor. How do you not understand? So Alexis needed a whooping for that. And I'm glad Tanil called her out because girl, we are on a first of all, we're on a TV show. Like, that's embarrassing. But number two, like, girl, this is business. Like, you're taking money out of my pocket telling this man he gonna pay $6,000 for a multi-million multi million dollar house. Like, what is wrong with you? And then when she did the tour with Tennille and she was just like echoing everything Tennille was saying, I was like, girl, get this girl up out of here, please. Where did she come from? Uh, she asked, she sat up here and asked that man, so uh, where do you like to cook your steaks, inside or outside? Girl, you're dumb. 
Like, and the man, I'm glad he answered the question like that because he was like, it doesn't matter where you cook your steaks as long as like the temperature of the stove is right. Like, girl, please get it together. She kind of used the excuse of like being a, you know, a mom and a wife or whatever, which, you know, I'm sure is really stressful. I'm neither, so I cannot relate. Um, but I'm, there are other, other realtors that were moms and wives and had their stuff together. Like you being a mom and a wife had nothing to do with the fact that you're not good at math and you didn't know what you was doing and you didn't know whether that house had eight bathrooms or six bedrooms or six bathrooms and eight bedrooms. You didn't know. So ne next is Anne. Anne was cute. I think Anne was cute. She was like smart um, and she was a go-getter. I liked Anne. I thought she like her character was fun. Um, she got a lot of screen time, which I was like, again, give it to to Neil or somebody else. But I'm, that's fine with me actually, because she was she was fun. She was cute, and I love that Anne was smart enough to know that like business loyalty does not pay off. Like, I feel like a lot of people when they're young and they get into their field of choice, they, you know, want to play like the loyalty game and think that them being loyal is going to be, you know, it's going to pay off and it's going to be something special to their boss. It's going to mean something and it usually does not. Um, yeah, let's call Sis Colony out, but we'll talk about that later. Um, Anne, was, Anne was super ready to go to um, Rena's hypothetical brokerage and I would love that. Um, what I didn't like about Ann was when she put that low ass offer in on that house, girl, you lucky that people ain't cuss you out. Cause what am I, what that, the difference between the proposal was like $4 million or 5 million. Actually, she, the, the house was 9 million and she put an offer of $4 million in with a straight face. F $5 million. Like girl, come on now. And I didn't like the way she dealt with that. She seemed like a little bit young and immature when um, she seemed a little young and immature when Sherelle called her out and was like, girl, what is this low ass offer? And she was like, oh, well, at least I got an offer. Girl, so how are you going to sell it? Who's going to buy? Who are you going to buy it from? Come on now. But overall, I liked Anne's character. I think she was fun. Like I, I, I could see me and her being friends. Hopefully, I mean, not like she ever gonna watch this video, but hopefully she don't get mad. <laughs> so next is Colony. I, I would like to pose a question to the people. As a colonized people, why would you name your child Colony? I don't get it. I would never like the girl. That's like naming your kid slavery, girl. Why would you name your kid Colony? But anyway, Colony was drop dead gorgeous. Colony was fine as hell. She was giving looks, especially in that black scallop dress that she was, um, where she was selling to that man, that fine older man. I said, go ahead, Colony. If you selling a little something on the side, I ain't mad at you, okay? That, that, that can compensate for your commission split. <laughs> um, but she, she seemed really smart and savvy. And even if she's not like, you know, going all the way there with her clients. I feel like she does use that sex appeal and I'm not mad at it. If I look like her, I would absolutely, girl, I don't know if that's a BBO or a natural body, but either way, it's giving 10 out of 10. She looks great. So she, she yeah, I, I like Colony. What I did not like about Colony, I think is what everyone um, is talking about, which is how she threw Anne under the bus when she met with Sherelle. Like, girl, if we homegirls, you don't know nothing. You know nothing when it comes to that. Like she should have kept her mouth shut. I don't know what, I don't know where they do that at, but girl around these parts, we don't snitch on friends, especially not in professional settings. And I don't know if they're like, they might not be like personal friends. They might just be like work besties, but regardless, like you girl, keep your mouth shut. Like be quiet. Why is you, why is you snitching and telling my plots? Girl, like, are you dumb? And so that unwavering loyalty got you nowhere because Sherelle still chose Joanna over you. Mm. And she shot her little shot too. Like she was very, I think she did a good job of like proposing um, what she wanted. But Sherelle was like, oh, uh, I'll think about it. Girl, she, she did not think about it. She already knew who she wanted to be in charge. I partially think that because um, Colony is such a good uh, broker or realtor that she kind of didn't want her cooped up in the office. So that may be, you know, a reason. But regardless, like, girl, you showed your loyalty. 
you were just so up in arms when Rena offered you um offered for you to switch to go to her brokerage and now look at you still in the same position you were in I don't know so I really I really didn't like that about her um but again I think she's like so so gorgeous and I think she is you know definitely has some smarts about her but I girl I just cannot get over the way she threw her friend under the bus like why would you do that because you it didn't get you nowhere and even if it did that's grimy so either way it's like not justifiable honestly if I was in I probably would be like cool off of her I'll be like okay girl I see what kind of girl you are and we're, I'm good so next is Joanna man I know that's shady and it, this is not to call Joanna a man at all I just thought, you know, it makes me think of Joanna, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Joanna. Um, Joanna, a.k.a. HR, she gave top tier sidekick energy. Like she, <laughs> she seemed like she is so happy to be Sherelle's little sidekick. It just, uh, it's just confusing to me. But she, she got on my damn nerves. Like, girl, she was always so shady with Colony, like, when, when Colony brought up that a concern with Sherelle at the table and she was like, oh, well, you can definitely get on her calendar. Girl, put me on the calendar to beat your ass. Because why are you talking to me? Would you like to get on her calendar? Like, girl, shut up. It's always that one person at work who got the same title as you or even lower that thinks they're the manager or want to be the manager so bad that they will do anything. Like, girl, go on, go on out of my face before I cuss you out and get fired. But her her divorce divorce situation was sad. Um, you know, nobody divorces are terrible. Um, I've never been through one, but my parents had a divorce. You know, I'm sure a lot of our parents went through divorce and it's not a pretty sight. So that for that, I really had a lot of sympathy with her for. And I'm not I understand like why she kept it quiet. But it's like, girl, you got to keep it a buck. Like you don't have to always be like so strong and like not letting anybody in like girl tell us what's going on so i don't cuss you out for being a smart ass um and i still you know i know we joke about hr like the title but i'm not sure like what does she do like what is her title because i didn't i don't think she's like you know a broker she's not a realtor is she like sherelle's personal assistant like what what is she what does she do? Because um, it's it's just it's kind of confusing me. Um, but the blind the blind date scene, the blind date scene was really funny to me. I because um, her blind date was like hella out of pocket, but he was not. It it wasn't to the point where like you couldn't enjoy it, you know, like or at least you know I wasn't the person on the date, but I, I at least thought it was funny. I don't know. And so Joanna, I'm kind of mad on her. I'm like. I didn't love her. I didn't like her. She, I mean, I, I liked her a little bit. Like, oh, also her hair was ate up. Her hair was ate up. And I was wondering like when it was going to get better, but it didn't. So maybe season two, you know, season one, like you don't always have the budget to be doing all like the hair and the makeup. But I was like, girl, get, get you some, some arrogant or somebody to get that together. Okay. So next we have Carla. I'm going to keep it at that while I was getting Carla and Alexis mixed up because they they kind of favor each other and they were both like in the bottom of the barrel as far as the realtor goes or the the you know the business goes because neither one of them were like really selling houses um but I liked Carla I thought she was nice like she seemed like to be a good friend um I can't really say too much about her because she was like didn't get that much screen time but I don't know she seemed cool I don't know. So she, she seemed cool. I thought she was really pretty and like, um, just kind of like a good person. She seemed like pretty principal, but I really, I don't know. I don't really have nothing to say about her other than I hope she got her numbers up because that's, and Alexis got fired for that. And you know, back to Alexis, I really didn't like how she was like, oh, she just gave up on me. Girl, this is business. This is business, love. Like you've been underselling for a long time. I don't know what you thought was going to happen, but and I don't think she's coming back. I don't think she should come back. But okay, now now I'm done with Alexis and I'm done with Carla. Okay, so next we're gonna get into my personal favorite, my personal favorite, which is Rena. I really like Rena. I thought she was so smart. She was so elegant and intelligent and sophisticated. And she was like, 
she was who Sherelle thought she was. Sorry, Sherelle. Um, I just really like Rena. I think she's so smart. And I really want her to go out and do her own brokerage thing because I did not like the way that she handled, um, that Sherelle handled the commission split thing with her. Um, and they tried to play my sis like the whole time. They was really trying to play her the whole time because I'm, I don't know about you, but if I'm in a brokerage or I'm in some kind of professional group um, and we're taking pictures to represent the organization or the agency and I'm not in it, I'm going to be kind of pressed unless I wasn't like hired at that point or something. But if I was there and I was not included in that photo shoot and you like decide to display the picture without me in it, I'm going to be, I'm going to feel away, you know? So I feel like they were trying to like play her like she was overreacting, but I don't feel like she was overreacting. I feel like she was well within her rights to feel that way. Like, I don't know why they acted like that with her. And I also don't like the way nobody backed her up when she was asking about the commission split. Like, girl, to go from a 95, 5% split, which is 95% to me and 5% to the agency to a 80, 20 is crazy. And I feel like she was absolutely right to be like, um, excuse you, what do you mean? And so if Sherelle don't get it together, she finna lose her best uh, and, mo and most intelligent realtor because, girl, what are you doing? I, I personally feel like Sherelle is a little bit intimidated by her because really when you think about it, like this is business. Like, of course you, you have ethics and you don't want to do anything that's like shysty or shady. But at the end of the day, like if I have the skills to go out on my own, why wouldn't I like why would I stay with you especially when I see you taking my money like that and not giving a damn about it not even caring enough to speak on it you know properly so I feel like she should start her start her brokerage I feel like Anne should go well I don't know Anne because Anne says she might get her broker license but I really feel like she should start her own brokerage and um do her own thing because she's definitely smart enough she's definitely got this you know skilled enough this is an engineer a lawyer and a realtor like and has her brokerage license like what can't she do and can we get into that shortcut for a minute like that shortcut looked good on her she was really cute she was definitely giving like the auntie that slides you like uh, some money like she don't have no kids but she slides you money when you know when she come by on the holidays um she definitely gives you like oh you know come to the store and ride with me in my new mercedes benz you know like very much um rich smart auntie vibes and i really liked her all right so last but not least we're going to get into the brokerage owner sherelle now i've seen sherelle um on the i am athlete or i am woman podcast um and i thought i thought she was cool i always kind of you know i was um a little bit more um i was a little bit more fond of her than the other girls and basically the i the i am athlete or she was on the i am woman podcast which is basically like the wives of athletes and i thought she was really dope and smart so it was nice to see that she has also got her own thing going on too and that she does not you know need her fiance uh who is chad ochocinco to like provide for her like she's a boss herself so i like that I thought she was so cute. She, I think she's really pretty. And her little freckles, like when she had no makeup on, I was like, oh, she is so cute. The body is right. The hair is right, okay? And I'm not, I'm not mad at it, not one bit. Now, for what I did not, I did not like her management style. I thought the way that she introduced the, um, the new commission split was out of pocket. You don't do that at a, at a meeting um, with... You just don't you just don't do that at a meeting when like nobody knows what you're talking about like you're blindsiding everybody like she i feel like she blindsided everyone like she should have talked about that you should talk about that like before like two months before it happened so people can get their budget together you know so people can voice any concerns you know so if people have any concerns or anything like that they can like address them with you before and like not in front of everybody so I felt like, again, like Rena was well within her rights to be like, um, excuse you, what do you mean 80-20? So yeah, I did not like her, her management style. I thought she was kind of like, it was kind of bullyish, like the way she was like, well, if you like it, cool. If you don't, then don't like it. Like, girl, that's, that's not, 
you know, like you need brokers to to help you sell these homes. Like you don't get to just do that to people. So I did not like that. And I didn't like how she rode up to like the company dinner in a boat with like not like if you're going to do that, do that with all your employees. You feel me? Like don't just how you just going to like come come in a boat with like two other people. I think it was just like Joanna and Carla. And when she pulled up, everybody had that better ass look on their face, as they should, because if this is a company dinner, like the whole company should be on the boat. Like, why would you do that? I don't get it. So, yeah, I just mm, I, I thought she was really pretty. Um, I love that she is her own boss. I think that's great. But it's also like that's why, like, you can't be too excited about the whole girl boss thing, because just because you have a female boss does not mean she ain't going to do you dirty. Cause I felt like that that was just like that was enough to have me on indeed you know like you know when that one thing at work happens and you'd be like oh no this this is not gonna work that would be my one thing I would have been on indeed immediately like you're not about to just change my pay and 15% like it'll be different if it went from a 95.5 to a, a 90.10 but to an like that much difference and you just gonna like plot that on our heads um you know, and when I heard she had the the army background, I was like, okay, well, you know, that makes sense because in the army, it's just like, it's do what I say and get over it. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't really love that. Um, now, I also was like, girl, how are you going to announce your part, announce your pregnancy at a Joanna's like divorce party? Like, girl, this is not about you. But you know the way with her management style I was really I was really like surprised at how easy she took it on Alexis like I thought she would have like chewed her out and been like girl you suck boo tomatoes 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 get out of here but she was like really nice with her and really gentle with her so that I was like okay I'm not mad at that because you know just because somebody sucks doesn't mean like you gotta you gotta cuss them out and throw them out. <laughs> But she just, she had she was well within her rights to fire that girl because she wasn't doing nothing special. And the situation about her mom's house was so sad. Like, I think uh, that's one of the most devastating things that can ever happen to a person. Like having your, you know, your childhood home burned down um, is so, so sad. So I really felt for her on that. I, like, I felt really bad for her. Um, and I hope that her mom and her stepdad, you know, had f figured that out because like that's an, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy you know because that's all your memories everything is gone it's just up in flames so um I hope that you know she figured that out I'm sure she got enough money too but you know there's still no money can replace um you know your childhood home being burned down okay so overall I really liked selling Tampa um I thought that it was like really motivational and just really cute in general like that again it made me want to like do my brokerage thing i was like i'm trying to get my real estate license um because basically you just like get to look cute and be up in fly ass homes like all day long i think i mean that's kind of ideal right um but tune let me know if there are any other shows that you want me to review i kind of want to um change directions and go into like more conversation because i love to talk if you could not tell um, but let me know if you want to me to review any more series, series, any other series, any different series. Oh no, girl, we are going to leave that there. You wouldn't know I had a master's degree, huh? Um, so if you are wondering, I finished off my eyes with the uh, Avocado Toast BH Cosmetics palette. Um, I won this in a giveaway and I think it's very, very cute. Give you a little green, a little, you know, a little something for the, for the winter. Um, and then I, my, on my lips, I have the Fenty Heat in Hot Chocolate. So that's gave me this little pretty brown wash that I have on my lips. But thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, let me know if you wanna, want me to review anything else. I would be happy to. All right, thank you. And until next time, bye everybody.